So now that Joe Manchin has announced that the reconciliation bill is not gonna happen, you forget the Biden administration, we're done with all of that. So what should actually be done? Do we just move on? Well, Bernie Sanders thinks there's something that we should at least pause on briefly before moving on. Let's take a look at that. I would hope we would have had 50 Democrats. Mm -hmm. But if that is the case, then I hope that we will bring a strong bill to the floor of the Senate as soon as we can. And let Mr. Manchin explain to the people of West Virginia why he doesn't have the guts to stand up to powerful special interests. Oh, so you want to vote on it no matter what, even, even if- Absolutely, absolutely. The American people have got to understand what is at stake. For decades now, what Congress has been doing, giving tax breaks to the rich, not standing up to the drug companies so that we end up paying the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, ignoring climate change. The president of the United States and mm -hmm. almost every Democrat is trying finally to address these issues. Did you know and this Mr. was coming? Mr. Manchin doesn't want to support us. Well, look, we've been dealing with Mr. Manchin for month after month after month. But if he doesn't have the courage to do the right thing for the working families of West Virginia and America, let him vote no in front of the whole world. So how do you tell somebody out there watching, wondering, how come you couldn't get Joe Manchin on board? Okay, so we're gonna get back to the whole thing about making the vote and all of that. But I wanna pause briefly on how that video ended because we've been through months of this now, these negotiations. And they played out how we thought Manchin was who we thought he was. And if Manchin wasn't, then Cinema would have done exactly. the same thing. She would yes. have been the person. Okay, so we knew that. So now he's asked after just laying out, uh, Manchin is fundamentally corrupt. He's not representative of his people. We're gonna force him to finally explain why he holds the position that he does. Jake Tapper says, whatever, forget all that stuff. How do you explain to people how you didn't get Joe Manchin on board? I just explained to you that he's not representative. He's not he's not waiting to be wooed. This wasn't about diplomacy. This wasn't about making sure he knows the polls of his constituents in West Virginia. He is a plant of the billionaire class to stop anything from happening. And Jake Tapper's like, oh, so the, the, it's your fault then. So how come you <laughs> didn't get him to do what the and Jake Tapper, by the way, his face was dead during all that. He doesn't care at all about the fact that none of this is gonna get passed. And it was so abundantly clear from his big dumb face. So I just wanna say that I do think there seems to be an unspoken code, even though you've got a two time presidential candidate, Bernie Sanders, who is railed against billionaires and the 1% for so long. I think there is an unspoken code among senators that it's like, we're not necessarily gonna out you as being mm -hmm. mostly made of dark money and like a little bit of mayonnaise. You know, like like we'll talk about the mayonnaise, but like we can't talk about the 95% of your dark money. And 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 I'm not I'm not trying to like harp on Bernie here, but it seems to be an unspoken rule and that's why I do think we need to change Congress. We do need to change the Senate. Obviously, we need to reform the Senate. We're not we haven't even talked about how undemocratic it is that a senator who represents, you know, I don't know, a fraction of the people who voted for Joe Biden, a small, I did the math on people who voted for Joe Biden. It's like 81 million compared to the 290,000 that voted for Manchin. Mm -hmm. It's like they get 279 times the representation that anyone who voted for Biden gets. Same. So, you know, I mean, it's bonkers, but I do think that well, we need to be to fair, move. they don't get, let's be clear, they don't get any representation. Oh, yeah. But no. they did choose Manchin. <laughs> they, yeah, sadly. They chose Manchin, um, but a couple of things like I don't know whether it was the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do, but sure, have him explain it to the world. Have uh, Kirsten Cinema and Senator Manchin say this is why we voted no, and they'll have to tell their constituents. And instead of the headline being sort of this dibble dabble of like you know wheelings and dealings and who's doing this and dibble dibble gobble gobble, instead of sort of Manchin and Cinema looking like um, petulant you know children, but who are holding out for something perfect. They're gonna have to just explain no, and then literally line by line have to say. I mean, if the media covers it correctly. So, yeah. But lastly, I think we need to move to a play, point where we can call out senators like Joe Manchin for the amount of money that they've invested or, or have invested in them in in again climate polluters in big pharma, et cetera. It just we're not there yet. We were. <laughs> like most of these fools do take corporate money, no matter what party they're from. Hundred percent.
Uh, really fast for you, and I do want to give a little bit of credit to Representative Alexandria Casa Cortez, who explained a lot of the structural problems with the Senate that go beyond just the mansion thing. But she does seem to agree with uh, with both Bernie Sanders and also Chuck Schumer says they're going to force a vote on it. I guess we'll see. But let's go to uh, AOC talking about this here. Uh, but we really need mm -hmm. to create a governing environment in the United States Senate, make it tough, don't go on vacation, come back, call the vote, have to stand here, in here. front of your constituents and say, no, I'm going to take dollars, I'm going to take the food out of your kid's mouths, make him take that vote. They, had, they made us take the vote for the bipartisan infrastructure bill. It was a tough vote. It wasn't easy. And, uh, and you know, we have to stop giving people get out of jail free cards. Enough enough. And, um, well, and it's are. really about time that we start to get serious about governing as well as leaning on the president's executive authority, uh, which I do not believe has been used to the fullest extent that that the American people deserve. Exactly. Yeah. And she explains multiple different ways that he could do some of what would be in the infrastructure bill through his executive power. Obviously, it would be a tiny fraction of it. But Francesca, what I would like to see is remember how annoying Trump wanting his name on the stimulus checks was? I think in place of the checks being mailed out every month, Biden should send a check, like a fake check that has the faces of those who voted to block this in place of the child tax credit that they would be getting. And maybe throw in there a little bit like, you know, for people who need dental care that he blocked that. Like, like there has to be some cost to this. And yes. I don't even think that that would, like, if that were to happen, that doesn't even necessarily matter to Manchin, but there has to be something. And I just, I don't think there's gonna be. I think we're just gonna move on. And Biden is gonna go back to my friend Joe Manchin. Maybe he'll work on me in the next one. That's my bigger fear. I mean, what a massive failure. You know, it, it truly is a massive failure on the part of Joe Biden and this presidency for not being able to put pressure on your own party and for not being able to um, lobby and to rally uh, his voters, the Democratic voters, to not be able to communicate accurately to the American people what exactly is at stake right now and ultimately come off looking like you don't really care, that you're okay with things like the child tax credits expiring, um, that you're okay with people being evicted from their homes that you're okay with just foregoing universal pre-k you know yeah sure we kind of had it on the table I mean it was it was a four trillion dollar plan it was over 10 years but anyway I'm fine with like nothing I'm fine with nothing and I think AOC is absolutely right I just want to say Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski have like taken selfies with Mansion they're big old homies so when Scarborough's like mm -hmm. absolutely just stop please just just get, give it up just don't stop glad handing like AOC just because she's on your stupid program I'm sorry um they're sending but each other Christmas cards this year, definitely. They absolutely are, yeah. of course they are. And just finally, I think AOC is right. Biden, Biden has a role to play going forward. If he can't get anything done with anybody else, then what about abolishing student debt? What about actually taking steps to get waivers across the country so that we can have single payer health care on a statewide level as per Obamacare, right? It's the closest to Medicare for all we can get. He promised that in his presidential run, so do it. And these are not things that have to be done by executive action. They are things that are at his disposal and he needs to mobilize them. Yeah, yeah, and he's just choosing not to, it's so annoying. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.